Hello and welcome to another Windows 7 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at user accounts. So just click on the start button and click on your profile picture. It's always a good idea to have a password on your system, so let's create one now. And for this video we'll just keep it short and sweet. You also have a chance to leave a password hint, just in case you may forget and you need some jogging of your memory. So let's create the password. And as you can see we can have an option to change our password now by entering these fields, or we can actually remove our password by entering that field and removing the password. Let's customize our icon. So we want to change the picture that's displayed on the login screen and also the picture that's on the start menu here. So let's click on change your picture. Now you can either choose the, de the default Windows ones, or you can browse for more pictures and choose one from your own pictures library. So let's click on browse for more pictures. And as you can see, it defaults to your own pictures library. We want our logo, so we'll click on that and click OK. And as you can see, it's changed the icon. So if you click on the Start button now, the profile picture has actually changed. And if we were to log out now, the actual picture would be the same as this one. If you want to change your account name, you can change that from here. So enter your new account name, click Change Name, and the name will change here. However, if you click on the Start button at this point, the name will still be the old name and it won't change until you either log off and log back in or do a fresh restart. So be aware. You can also change other accounts or manage other accounts. So if we click on that, you'll notice that your account will always be here and also there will always be another default account called guest. Now a guest account is always a good uh, scenario to have. This is a default one that Windows always has. And generally it's good for in the situations, for example, let's say our good friend Bob is coming over and he wants to use your computer, but you don't want him to use your own account because you might have pictures that you don't want him to see or he may, you might have documents that you want, don't want him to see. So if we click on guest account, you have the option to turn that on. And as you'll notice, it does actually state password protected files, folders or settings are not accessible to guest users. So it's a closed secure operating system where basically they can only just use the basic functions of anything that you have on the computer, but not actually change the settings themselves. So if we turn that on, that's now active. But let's say we have another friend called George and he wants his own account. So let's create an account for George. Now there's two different options to have. You can either have standard user or administrator. Administrators have full privileges of the system. They can install programs, they can remove programs. They can also make global setting changes, for example, network settings and program settings. And also um, they can actually confirm um, changes to other, uh, to that actually affect other users. Standard users generally, they can only affect anything that will actually affect themselves. For example, backgrounds, where their folders are, things like this. They won't actually be able to access anybody else's folders unless it's been okayed by the administrator. So we'll keep him as a standard user create the account. So if George actually wants to change his settings, he can actually, or you want to change them for him, you can click that on there. And as you can see, you'll be given the same options that you would have had before. So let's just go back. Okay, so let's say we want to give George uh, parental control. So we want him to have a limited access to the computer because uh, we don't want him to access certain features. So let's go to parental controls, click on George, and we'll click on enforce current settings. So the different settings that we can actually change are time limits. We can control which type of games that he'll play and we can actually even block specific programs. So if we click on time limits, you'll be brought to a, a sort of like a table and anything that you highlight in blue, so click and drag or just click on any random box these are the certain times or during the day where he will be allowed and not allowed to use the system. So you can say, let's say Monday at 12 o'clock, he's allowed Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Uh, however, Wednesday at one o'clock and Fridays only at uh, eight o'clock. Sorry, seven o'clock and eight o'clock. Let's click OK. On games. So let's say we have um, some 18 plus games that we don't want him to play any shoot 'em ups that are too graphic for him. 
So let's say he can't play those or we can actually set game rating so it won't actually allow him to play. So he's only a 12 year old so we don't want him to play any of the other games that are actually um, obviously too old for him. So let's click OK. We can also um, block or allow specific games. So if any, if we have installed any on, it, on his account or any on the computer, we can actually block or allow specific games. It's a great feature to have. It also allows us to go a step further and actually block specific programs. So let's say George can only use programs I allow. Let's say I don't want him to be able to use VLC player or we don't want him to use Windows Media Player. We can actually um, just click on those and click OK. But we'll leave that to him because that's a bit too harsh. Click OK. And we can go back to user accounts. And now the final setting that are generally used um, are user account control settings. Now the UAC is an infamously known uh, annoyance in some cases, but it has, its, it has its advantages. So if you click on user account control settings, you can specify whether you want to be notified when any changes to your system occur or you can be um, the opposite and have always notifications when any setting is changed. Now generally, if you're a fairly confident user, you won't really need to um, have any um, of those pop-up screens coming up because they do get annoying sometimes. So you'll always slide it to never notify and click OK. Or if you're quite a nervous user, first time user to Windows, and you want to minimize any kind of viruses if you're not running any proper security um, softwares, then it's probably best to, to say always notify. But in our case, we're going to leave it never notified because we know what we're doing. So let's click OK. OK, so that's the end of our tutorial. Thank you for watching. And remember to hit the subscribe button as we'll have plenty more videos coming up. And also don't forget to check out our website at ectatech.co.uk forward slash blog, where you'll see plenty of other videos and also product uh, walkthroughs on any other products that we sell. Thank you. And until next time, goodbye.